Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going on a fascinating journey back in time to explore insular India. For some 53 million years, India retained a degree of isolation. 11 million years out of the 53 million years, India was a complete island. Across the latter stages of the Cretaceous and most of the Paleocene, insular India was an isolated landmass which became the Indian subcontinent. Following the breakup of Gondwana, the process of India's separation from Madagascar first began 88 million years ago, the Indian subcontinent remained an isolated landmass as the Indian plate drifted across the Tethys Ocean, forming the Indian Ocean. Although, complete isolation only occurred towards the end of the Maastrichtian, a process that has been suggested to be the creation of the Deccan Traps. Soon after, the land mass moved northward rather quickly, until contact with Asia was established 55 million years ago. Even then, both land masses did not become fully united until around 35 million years ago. The Burma terrain, or West Burma block, an isolated island arc that was also present in the Tethys Sea during the Cretaceous, collided with insular India during the Paleocene, and was pushed northwards, eventually colliding with mainland Asia independent of insular India's own collision. Much of western Myanmar consists of the former Burma terrain. This isolation allowed its local biota to follow the typical pattern seen in islands and diversify in unique ways. Faunal interchanges with other land masses, like Africa and Europe occurred during this period, and a considerable Asian influence can already been seen long before contact was made. This rendered India rather peculiar as not just an isolated continent but also a stepping stone in the dispersal of many animals and plants across Africa, Europe, Madagascar, Asia and possibly even Oceania. Still, several archaic fauna managed to survive. Although, the vast majority of India's terrestrial vertebrate life was wiped out in the Cretaceous-Paleocene extinction event, or KPG extinction event, the extinction which wiped out all the non-avian dinosaurs. Only three extant tetrapod lineages can trace their ancestry to Cretaceous India. Most of India's few other surviving Gondwanan lineages were outcompete during the Paleocene era, by newly arriving lineages. However, plants and invertebrate fauna were less affected. During the Paleocene, dispersing tetrapod lineages from Asia repopulate India, with some, such as lagomorphs, evolving on the continent. By the time full contact was established, a large percentage of India's old and new indigenous fauna had been outcompete by Eurasian species. However, several groups like lagomorphs have become widespread across the world, as have floral groups such as dipterocarps, which went on to become dominant tree species throughout much of tropical Asia. A significant portion of Asian mantises also originated on insular India. The fossil record from the Upper Cretaceous Lamita Formation, Deccan Intertropian Beds, and the Kalamita Formation bring forth fauna and flora that are considered to have taxonomic affinities either to those of Gondwana or Laurasia or had origins in the northward drifting Indian Plate. During the present analysis, it is inferred that the fauna of Gondwana affinity confirms a vicariant biogeographic scenario with many of the taxa having sister group relationships with those of Madagascar. Several taxa, such as auriculid mammals, bothermitted turtles, ostracods, and at least five plant groups were endemic to India and made their way to Laurasia following India-Asia collision thus supporting out of India dispersal hypothesis. The Cretaceous fauna of India is well attested in both Coniacian and Maastrichtian aged sites such as the Lamita Formation. Generally speaking, the local dinosaurian and crocodilian fauna is almost identical to that of Madagascar, with clades like abelosaurids, titanosaurs, nosaurids and notosuchians being well represented here. A possible deviation is the presence of stegosaurs, the last remaining members of this lineage, these relics would be the only indigenous ornithischians in the entire Indo-Malagasy landmass. Another possible deviation is the presence of a trudontid, a lineage more typically associated with Laurasia and thus possibly indicating interchange with Europe or even mainland Asia. The mammalian fauna of India also bears similarities with that of Madagascar, with the Gondwanathir baratherium, one of the most common mammals, being extremely similar to the Malagasy levanophi. 
The most diverse mammals in the Maastrichtian of India are eutherians, a clade normally associated with northern continents and also found in Madagascar in this epoch. Some like Decanolestis have been variously interpreted as Eurocontins, Adipocericulids, or Stem Afrotherians. Carmarungulatum, formerly interpreted as a stem ungulate, is now known to be a representative of Zelestidae. The Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event had a particularly catastrophic effect in India, wiping out almost all terrestrial vertebrate lineages on the continent. It is thought that the effects of the Deccan Traps volcanism may have compounded the extinction event's impacts, making it especially devastating for the subcontinent. Only three extant tetrapod groups have representatives that can be verified as descending from Gondwanan lineage of insular India, one family of frogs, i.e. Nasicabatrachidae, several families of Sicilian, i.e. Grandisonidae, Chichilidae and Ichthyophyidae, and one family of blind snakes, i.e. Garapilidae. Notably, all three lineages have a fossorial mode of life, indicating that this lifestyle may have saved them from the extinction's impacts. Several mammal genera also survived the event, although they went extinct during the Paleocene. Invertebrate fauna, especially soil invertebrates such as centipedes, were likely less affected by the extinction, and several lineages that persist today are thought to have Gondwan in ancestry. The Perizyni, a subfamily of the freshwater mussel family Unionidae, are thought to have originated in East Gondwana during the Jurassic, and survived on both Africa and insular India throughout the Cretaceous. Several different tribes, i.e. Indochinalini, Lamellodentini, and Perizyini of the Perizyni evolved in isolation on insular India. These endemic tribes managed to survive the KPG extinction, and colonized mainland Asia via both insular India and the Burma terrain. They are now found throughout much of India and Southeast Asia. Similarly, numerous lineages of mantises are thought to have originated on the Antarctic Indian landmass after the breakup of Gondwana, and persisted on insular India after it broke away. This massive diversity of mantises survived the KPG extinction and invaded mainland Asia following the collision of insular India with Asia. The fossil record of the Paleocene of India, when the continent was a fully isolated landmass, is dubious and thus most inferrals about its fauna are somewhat speculative. It is known for certain that Decanolestis and Baratherium survived the KPG event, though for how further long did non-placental eutherians and gondwanatheres live in India is unknown, and by the time the landmass makes contact with Asia they are most likely extinct. During this epoch, unambiguous placental mammals make their way into India in spite of its isolation, probably by rafting like the many placental groups in Madagascar, or perhaps brief connections with Africa and Europe. Hyenodonts are an endemic African clade, first showing outside of the continent in the Paleocene of India and Europe. Glyaries evolved in Asia, but a lineage became isolated in India, where it gave rise to the lagomorphs. By this time India already has an extensive placental fauna, as well as metatherians like Indodelphus, but in its isolation there are still high degrees of endemism, with some clades like anthracobunids not being found elsewhere. A study on Cambatherium suggests that Parisodactyla might have had an insular origin in India. The most notable endemic mammals are cetaceans, which are in fact restricted to the Indian subcontinent until the evolution of the marine protocedents. During this time, lagomorphs and hyenodonts disperse out of India, establishing their cosmopolitan ranges. The Jecarsinusidae, a family of freshwater crabs widespread throughout much of tropical Asia, is thought to have originated in India, despite not being of ancient Gondwanan origins themselves. Divergence estimates indicate that the Jekarsinusidae originate from Southeast Asian ancestors that dispersed to insular India and diverged there during the Middle Eocene, before India collided with Asia. As India drifted northwards, it may have come into close enough proximity to Southeast Asia to allow for dispersing lineages to colonize it. Notably, as the Jekarsinusidae are a freshwater group that could not disperse via marine habitats, this indicates that temporary land bridges may have formed in the Eocene between India and Southeast Asia, allowing for the dispersal of freshwater organisms to India while it was still isolated. Following the India-Asia collision, the Jekarsinusidae dispersed back into mainland Asia. 
The giant madsoid snake Vasuki indicus was likely the apex predator of this time and environment. The Dipterocarpoidae, the largest subfamily of the Dipterocarpaceae, is thought to originate from ancestors that dispersed from Africa to India during the late Cretaceous. Surviving the KPG extinction event, the Dipterocarpoidae were isolated on insular India, aside from some representatives in the Seychelles island, until India's collision with Asia, after which they migrated out of the continent and diversified. The Dipterocarpaceae are now among the most widespread and dominant tree groups in tropical Asia. Fossil evidence indicates that the other subfamily of Dipterocarpaceae, the Monotoidae, presently found in Africa, Madagascar, and South America, also colonized India and was present until the Eocene, but ultimately went extinct in India, and thus did not disperse to other parts of Asia. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumb up, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next video.